Treatment-related MDS, or AML, is myelodysplastic syndrome or acute myelogenous leukemia that occurs as the result of prior chemotherapy or radiation. We generally associate all subsequent tumors related to MDS and AML in individuals who've pre previously had chemotherapy to the chemotherapy that they've received in the past. These myelodysplastic syndromes and leukemias have a characteristic set of both clinical features and genetic features that help us further define them as secondary or treatment related. We use the terms bone marrow transplantation and stem cell transplantation fairly synonymously. They're both stem cell transplants. Uh, it just depends on where we get the stem cells from. So when we do a stem cell transplant, we are transplanting hematopoietic or blood forming stem cells from a donor to a recipient. This is done for treatment of a variety of malignancies, particularly cancers of the blood, but also some non-malignant disorders like aplastic anemia and some metabolic diseases as well. Before discussing the new treatments, it's important to understand that the only therapy that can actually provide a cure for treatment-related MDS or AML is stem cell transplantation. And it's been our goal to try to increase the availability of stem cell transplantation to all patients who need it. And with that in mind, we've had several advances in the last few years. Probably the most important is the use of reduced intensity or reduced toxicity conditioning re regimens, which allow us to do transplantation into individuals well into their 70s when it's medically appropriate. We also have new ways of finding donors, and we've expanded the donor pool by using umbilical cord blood or haploidentical donors, that is half-matched family members for transplantation. This has opened up transplant to a variety of individuals, again, both older individuals who might not have siblings who will be uh, appropriate candidates to be donors, they can use their children, but it also opens up stem cell transplantation to uh, most ethnic minorities where the uh, databases and registries have been less successful in finding perfect matches for these people. And so the use of cord blood and haploidentical transplant allows us to offer transplant to individuals in whom a donor might not have been available 10 or 15 years ago. For anyone who's, say, not Caucasian, the likelihood of finding a perfectly matched donor in the worldwide or just the American registries is on the order of 30 to 40 percent. But we can get well above 75, 80 percent for just about everybody when we start looking at things like cord blood and haploidentical transplantation. Latermavir is a drug that's designed specifically to treat an infection called cytomegalovirus that occurs after bone marrow transplant. CMV is something that we all acquire in our teenage or young adult years. It causes a febrile illness like infectious mononucleosis when we're young. But we carry that virus with us uh, and that virus can reactivate uh, after bone marrow transplant when our immune subsystems are very suppressed. So latermavir is a drug that can treat and actually prevent the reemergence of CMV infection after bone marrow transplantation. The pivotal trial that was recently reported showed that the rate of reactivation of CMV or cytomegalovirus was lower when latermavir was given in a preventative fashion. And while CMV is not often a major cause of mortality after transplant, in this trial there actually was a survival advantage for individuals who received preventative doses of latermavir early after transplant. We don't quite understand how uh, that survival advantage really came to be, but it's very intriguing and we're going to study it more and certainly begin to use latermavir in our high-risk patients, probably not all patients who are undergoing stem cell transplantation, but a select group that have the highest risk of CMV reactivation. There are many intersections of the, world, the fields of personalized medicine and stem cell transplant. Probably most importantly is the way we find donors and the precision at, the, at which we can identify perfect matches for individuals to, uh, to undergo transplantation. But beyond that, uh, particularly in MDS and AML, the field of precision medicine has allowed us to identify a number of targets that can be uh, attacked in the individual patient with MDS or AML. It has led to several new drugs being approved in the AML space, and we're using those drugs 
both to help get our patients to transplant, that is, put them into remission and make them better candidates for transplantation, but also to use these drugs after transplantation to prevent relapse, which is the number one cause of failure for these patients. Beyond that, we're using the personalized medicine field to devise, to devise things like personalized vaccines for patients after transplant. And then we're using it as well in the CAR T-cell space where we genetically modify T-cells from patients and we can give them back to the patient to treat their uh, tumors. This quite, quite hasn't hit yet for leukemia and MDS, but it is certainly an active field of research and we might actually see some advances in personalized medicine and CAR T-cell therapy in myeloid diseases moving forward. I think in the space of MDS and AML, particularly treatment-related MDS and AML, the one thing patients should really know is they need to be seen in a transplant center early in their disease course. And so we advocate very early referral to a transplantation center for all patients who are diagnosed with treatment-related MDS and AML. The sooner the patient is seen at the transplant center, the sooner the search process can start and the easier it will be to get the patient to transplantation when the time is right. We often find that patients are referred too late to the transplant center, and this really does prevent some patients from getting what could be a life-saving treatment with a bone marrow transplant. So